Hey everybody, today we're given kind of a, uh, shall we call it a non-routine problem, where the value we're looking for is a rational number. Okay, I probably should say a non-integer rational number, but it's functioning as the base of a logarithm, so it's unknown, but it's also in here as part um, of this input argument, and it's also part of something called a ceiling function. Now, just in the event you're not familiar with ceiling functions, let's just work a concrete example. Here's the definition of a ceiling function. The ceiling always returns an integer, which is useful later on in the problem. It always returns an integer irrespective of the real input. So, uh, for example, if you wanted to do the ceiling of, um, I don't know, 31 over 6, 31 over Let's make it, yeah, 31 over 6 is good enough, okay? Thir the the ceiling of 31 over 6, well, 30 divided by 6 is 5. So the ceiling of this is going to be equal to uh, 6, okay? Uh, again, 31 over 6 is between 5 and 6. So that's because uh, 5 is the lower bound for 31 over 6, the, inter the integer lower bound, we should say, perhaps. All right, and then this is uh, six right here, of course. Okay, so sixes are all over the place, but uh, it just it's 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 the number. It's it's called the ceiling function because it's the least integer that's greater than the input argument. Okay, okay. Now let's move along and get into the problem. Now you guys, for me, any logarithmic statement can be rewritten exponentially, and that's what I've done right here. Okay. This statement right here, I rewrote the thing exponentially because x is our base, minus 4 is our exponent, so you can write it like this, x to the minus 4th is equal to what was the input argument of the original uh, log expression. Now, properties of exponents get us this far, right? The minus 4 disappears, it's just basic uh, laws of exponents. And also, you can kind of handle this in a way that's a lot like just a regular equation. If you multiply through by 81, you get something that maybe is a little bit more manageable. Now, notice we finally get to the point where we have to appeal to the fact, remember, x is a rational number. And I probably should have said, again, a non-integer rational number, although I think that just kind of comes out in the wash. So for this to have a solution, the numerator has to equal to 3 to the 4th, which is 81. Notice 463 is not even divisible by 3, I think, which helps out here. Okay, and it's over m to the fourth, where m is some integer. Okay, so m m would be uh, let's call it a natural number, positive integer. All right. Now this is true because remember, if if you try to take the square root of anything other than a fourth power, or if you try to take the fourth root of anything but a fourth power, you're going to get an irrational number. It's, that's the same thing for squaring, cubing. Whereas if you try to take the nth root of an nth power. Anything that's not an nth power, you're going to get an irrational number. So that's kind of useful. So what we can do right here is, is take a look at some of the, the fourth powers. For example, uh, 4 to the fourth is equal to 256, right? But notice um, that if this whole part is equal to 256, how are we going to get there? Because 463 is already bigger than 256, right? Okay, and this is going to be positive over here. So, again, now I say X is a member of Q. I probably should have, you know, said Q plus, I guess. I'm not sure if I really needed that, but it probably should say Q plus, the positive rational numbers. So, you see, we can discard uh, 4 raised to the 4th power, all right? Because it's just this, this 463 function is kind of like a bounding constant, Okay. Now let's take a look. What's the next highest fourth power? Uh, that would be uh, 5 to the fourth is equal to 625, right? Now that seems like it's in range because 625 at least is bigger than 463, right? Okay, so what you can do here is just inspect. You know this is always going to return an integer, right? This is always going to return an integer, right? And you know that three, it's, it has to be something in the form uh, x is equal to three over something, right? And we've already seen that it can't be four, right? Because that would knock, it wouldn't, this whole thing couldn't be, couldn't add up to 256, right? 
So if we try five here, if we try five here, and again, this is just uh, by inspection, kind of, if we try five, notice that uh, one over X, and I'll just go ahead and put the ceiling around this, one over X, and let's do the ceiling, would be equal to the ceiling of five thirds. And that, I'm looking at that because that's this part right here, folks. So that's the ceiling of five thirds, but that's equal to two. Okay. But notice right here, you would get that uh, right here. So you would have, do I have room here, folks? This all would add up to, let me just come right here, folks. This would add up to two times 81. So that's 162. plus 463. See, that constant kind of gives things away. That's why the problem is a little bit of a hack in a way. Uh, so this is 162 plus 463. Does that add up to 625? Yes, it does. Okay. And so you see, we get that X must equal to three. This. And again, folks, the 463 gave you a good idea when to start. If this was a larger constant, you would start higher, but we checked for four to the fourth, saw it was too small. Five to the fourth happened to work out. So anyway, that is the solution. And again, I'm trying to look for a way to, to refine this problem type because the, the this this constant 463 or 81 looks sort of, you know what I mean, Hank, uh, kind of uh, hokey, you know, so... Uh, but in any event, I think it's a decent problem because you do have to use a little bit of logic, like this has to be three to the fourth over m to the fourth, otherwise it would be an irrational solution and we we're given that it's rational. So you're using some of the givens, but I'm trying to think of a way to uh, compose a, a better problem with not, not, with not uh, such a strange looking constant. Okay, but anyway, the solution is x equals two, three fifths. Good day.